We're going to talk about why I still use the Nikon Z7 II for my landscape photography and did not upgrade to the Nikon Z8. Gear. It's so easy to get caught up talking about gear. Should I upgrade to this new camera? Should I upgrade to this new lens? Should I do this? Should I do that with my gear? And even on this channel, I do talk about gear a fair amount. I try to always disclaimer it and say, you know, be careful. Gear is not the thing that makes or breaks your landscape photography. But people do like to hear about real world experiences with equipment and gear. So I do tend to talk about that on the channel. With that said, gear is really sort of overrated. There are so many things you can do without purchasing gear to improve your landscape photography that having the latest greatest gear is simply not it. And that's why today I want to talk a little bit about why I still shoot with my Nikon Z7 II and haven't fallen on the Nikon Z8 bandwagon or the Z9 prior to that. Now I've talked about Nikon gear in the past, I've talked about why I shoot Nikon, and I've even talked about some things I wish Nikon would do a little differently in previous videos. I will link to those videos down below in case you want to check them out. With that said, this video is going to focus more on the Nikon Z7 II, why I shoot with it, and why I don't feel the need to upgrade to the Nikon Z8. So the Nikon Z7 II was announced in October of 2020 and released the following month, and it was the successor to the popular Nikon Z7. There have been a few improvements made to it, and the Nikon Z7 II is what I ended up with. So the Nikon Z7 II camera is a 45.7 megapixel full-frame camera, has a base ISO of 64, shoots 14-bit RAW files, and has dual card slots, as well as several other features you would expect of a modern-day camera. Essentially, it is a workhorse of a camera and fits right in with modern cameras of today. And on this feature list, I'm sort of focusing in on some of the things that are important to me and some of the things that attract me to this camera. First, 45.7 megapixels. To me, that's sort of the sweet spot of resolution. I feel like 45.7 is good. You don't start getting into some of the complexities of higher resolution files and some of the some of the problems that sort of come along with that, which I've talked about in some of my other videos. But it's sort of that sweet spot. It gives me a nice high image quality. It gives me a little bit of cropping room for so I can when I'm out shooting something, I can compose it. I can just pull back just a little bit, knowing I'll have a little bit of room to crop in and still have a high quality file. So for me, 45.7 megapixel size works well. I don't find myself really wanting a lot more resolution even in future cameras. I'm pretty happy at the 45.7 megapixel camera for now. I did like the base ISO being 64. Just that little bit of extra, I can get it to ISO 64. Sometimes it helps with a lot of waterfalls. It'll let me get that slightly extra shutter speed without having to get into ND filters and things like that. Nice clean image quality at a base 64 ISO. So I did find that attractive and I do use that quite frequently when I use the Nikon Z7 II. I like that added ISO range. And really, dual card slots was important to me. I probably would have upgraded to either a Z6 or a Z7 back in the day when they first came out with them, but the single card slot, just it just didn't fit well. Back then, I used to shoot Nikon D750s that had dual card slots, and I just have that dual card slot so integrated into my workflow of being able to have a backup of the images you know, on the road. It makes it super easy to pull one card out. Just recently, I was out on a trip with my wife, took some pictures, and I was able to just pop that second card out, hand it to her, and say, hey, keep, keep a hold of this. Just just to sort of get a media on the fly backup of my data that was on the camera. So I find the dual card slot just something that does, I really seek out in the camera. So it may not be important to everybody, but it was important to me and it was a welcomed feature to the Z7 II. And finally, I've talked about this a lot. Ergonomics these days is just huge to me. Really, any modern camera made within the past decade, really even the past 15 years, the camera's not what's holding you back. Again, you might have some limitations to work around to be aware of, but the camera isn't really what's holding you back in your photography. So because of that, and because you can really just go buy a Canon, a Sony, a, a Lumix, a, a Nikon, any of those, technically you're going to get a camera that is very well equipped to do whatever you need it to do. So for me, how the camera feels in my hand is super important. And I've talked about that before. Anytime someone asks me, what camera should I go buy? I'll tell them, you know, go look at these, but go to the camera store, pick them up, hold them in your hand. And what feels good? Uh, for example, Nikon, I just love the grip on the Nikon. My hand just wraps in there, super nice, super, just feels really good in hand. I'm used to where the buttons are. This isn't to say it's button positioning is perfect, but it works for me and I'm just so used to it that you know I know exactly where the dials are, the shutter release is right there, and I just don't have to relearn any of that. Having everything feel nice and comfortable is very important. So ergonomics is big to me. It's almost probably one of the bigger factors in a camera. So like I said, don't underrate ergonomics. But with that said, the Z7 II feels great in hand. 
So really, I've been very satisfied with the Nikon Z7 II. I've been shooting with it now for a year and a half, two years, something like that is when I got it. And it's been through sub-zero cold, it's been in high heat, it's been in the rain, it's been in the snow, and it's just performed flawlessly. Uh, battery life is decent for a mirrorless camera, and it's just it's just been a workhorse of a camera. It's never let me down, and it's the camera's never been something that I'm like, oh, I didn't get that shot because of the camera. It's just never been that. And because of that, that's probably why I'm not really looking always to upgrade. Do I pay attention to what Nikon's coming out with next? Yeah, but I don't have this strong urge to feel like I've got to get to the next camera or the latest, greatest camera in the Nikon line because the Z7 II is working out really well for me so far. But then the Nikon Z8 was announced in May of this year, 2023. So I was curious to see what the Z8 was going to bring to the table. Was it going to be more of a Z6, Z7 form factor with additional features, you know, that was going to bring to the table to bring some significant improvements to a landscape photographer or not? So the Z8 came out and it is an impressive camera and I'm totally glad to see Nikon coming out and continuing to come out with great cameras. But on the still side, the Nikon Z8 really didn't bring a lot to the table. It's still a 45.7 megapixel camera. So the Nikon Z8 did bring some autofocus improvements and I don't see them as a huge benefit necessarily for landscape photographers but it is much faster and if you're a wildlife photographer I could see their case starting to be made to make that bump. For landscapes I don't see it quite as important now. They did improve its low light autofocus which could be useful for sunrises, sunsets, things like that. Sometimes the Nikon Z7 will hunt in those lower light conditions to try to get that focus and try to get it dialed in. So with the Z8's improvements in low light focus there could be some benefit to that but currently the autofocus and the focus and low light for the Z7 II is just a, I'll call it a minor annoyance, just something to watch out for. Like I mentioned earlier, as long as you know where some of your limitations are, you know sort of to watch out for them, pay attention to them, and move with it with that. And at that point, I'm still content to do that. But really, a lot of the Z8 improvements were bringing in some really nice video features. And if you were doing a lot of video and photography, the Z8 could be a nice hybrid all-in-one camera. However, for me, even though I have a YouTube channel, all my video tends to be done on another camera, not my main camera that I'm using out in the field. For example, most of my YouTube videos these days are recorded on my Nikon Z30. Not even a powerhouse of a camera, but it does get enough to lug out in the field and you know, use on a day-to-day -day basis for YouTube videos. So for me, the video features that the Z8 brought, which were impressive, just aren't a big selling factor. Now there were a couple features the Z8 brought that I thought were attractive. It has a two-way tilt screen, which the Z7 II does not have. Z7 II, we can just flip it out like that. Super handy for getting low and then being able to see your composition. But if you go portrait mode, I have no tilt to bring it down. So if you're doing a low portrait, which I do like to do, I have to sort of get down and really scrunch down low to the ground to be able to compose my image well. So, you know, the two-way tilt screen would be nice. It would certainly help in those situations. Uh, another factor that you've probably seen videos from me on is the sensors on the Nikon Z series, the C6, Z6 II, Z7, Z7 II, tend to get dirty fairly frequently because there's no sensor shield over it. When you make a lens change, the sensor is exposed. So I've had to get more in the habit of using a lens blower or using a static brush or just more regular sensor cleaning of my camera. Well, the Z8 has a sensor shield so that when you're doing lens changes, there's a covering over the sensor trying to help protect it from dust, which I would hope would lead to fewer instances of having to clean your sensor. But again, small improvements. We'll get into why I'm not sure those are significant enough to warrant the upgrade. So that's a high level look at the Z8. Again, I'm really sort of focusing on features that I look at when I'm considering a camera, you know, glossed over. Yes, it does great video. I'm not diving into its video specs. Those are all posts online and there's better people to talk about video specs than me. And I've really just touched on the stills aspect of things that are, that are important to me. So let's move on to why not the Z8. One, sort of why it's a non-starter to me, is it's big. The camera body itself is, yes, smaller than the Z9 because there's not an integrated grip, but the body, even without an integrated grip, is still bigger than the Z7 II and the Z6 II. So, for example, the Nikon Z8 is almost three-quarters of an inch taller than the Nikon Z7 II. So, this height right here, it's almost three-quarters of an inch taller. That's problematic to me. On the other measurements, its width and its depth, it's almost a half-inch bigger. So, it's just a bigger body all around. Then you factor in the weight, it weighs about a half pound more than the Nikon Z7 II. Now why rule it out because of all those? Well because as a landscape photographer we're often carrying our camera either for long distances or through difficult terrain. The last thing we want to do is increase the bulk of our camera. If anything what mirrorless cameras brought to the table for us was a smaller form factor camera with still retaining a high quality full frame sensor in it. So when you start to take and build these bodies bigger that starts to diminish that extra value the mirrorless is supposed to be bringing to me. So I just don't want to add a one just from the size of the camera takes up more 
room in the pack and makes it harder to pack things in there, may maybe forces me to carry a bigger pack. And then when you start to factor in weight, it's just there's other things I could be adding weight for into the pack. I don't really want to add a half pound to my camera weight for really not an appreciable difference in image quality from the camera. So that size and weight is really sort of a non-starter for me. Until Nikon comes out with a camera that's a very similar or same or smaller form factor as the Nikon Z7 II, it's probably gonna be really hard to get me to consider an upgrade. So the next factor is price. Whenever you're thinking about purchasing new gear, you have to think about your return on investment. Is the money I spend going to get me some value, some return on that spend to improve my landscape photography or solve some problem I'm having? Maybe it's not an improvement, maybe it's just solving a problem I'm having. Maybe my camera is too heavy and I'm willing to spend some extra money to lighten it up. You know, maybe in the future there's a camera that has improved dynamic range, which would be great. That would be an actual benefit to landscape photographers and it would warrant paying more money for that. But in this case, the Nikon Z7 II is still available new for $2,999. It still goes on sale, and you could always buy one used. So the Nikon Z7 II is still an expensive camera, but the Nikon Z8 lists for $3,999. So I don't really want to go spend $4,000 on a new camera when I don't really see it bringing anything of tremendous value to the table. If anything, it actually has more cons because of the size and weight of it than any of the image quality or any of the actual photography features it brings. Like I said, even with the, the small things, I do think are small incremental improvements that low light focus would be nice the two-way tilt screen would be nice the sensor shield would be nice i don't want to pay four thousand dollars just to get those because i've sort of learned how to work around the limitations of the nikon z7 II. and when i say limitations they're really minor annoyances they aren't deal breakers there are things i'm aware of i know i need to carry a rocket blower in my pack because the sensor sometimes gets dirty i know if i'm going to do a portrait shot i'm probably going to get dirty and i'm going to have to get down on the ground and get that get to get that shot and if i'm in low light and using autofocus then i know i need to be sort of pay close attention to that focus it might hunt a bit and i need to make sure it actually hits the focus point I wanted. But those are all things I can know, be aware of, and they're only small inefficiencies in the field and not deal breakers. And that's it. That's really why I still shoot the Nikon Z7 II and why I passed on the Nikon Z8. For a landscape photographer, I just don't see the Z8 bringing a lot of value to the landscape photographer. In fact, if I was still coming from, say, my old DSLRs, the D750, I would probably still go with a Z7 II just because the size and weight is just such a big con to me in the Z8 that the Z7 II just seems like a much better upgrade. It'd still be significant leap in quality and features out in the field and actually save me some size and weight versus one of my older D750s. So for me, the Nikon Z7 II is a great camera and even with those mild little annoyances, certainly isn't holding me back in my landscape photography growth. And remember, camera gear is only one small part of the equation of improving your landscape photography. There's so much more to it. Working on improving your compositions, learning how to read the light, which can really only be done with time out in the field, learning how to improve your post editing, all of those will do more to improve your landscape photography in the long run than the newest, latest, greatest camera will. Now the question is, will I upgrade to the new Nikon Z7 III if Nikon releases something like that in the future? Time will tell. It'd be a close evaluation of the features. What value does it bring? What size of the camera? Does it feel good in hand? We'll just have to see what they come up with. But in the meantime, I'm quite happy with my Nikon Z7 II and I'm really not seeking out an upgrade. So how about you? What are you shooting with? Are you happy with your camera? Are you looking to upgrade? Let me know down in the comments below. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching. Oh.